So being here in Edinburgh, I'm confronted by one of my worst bookish shames on a regular basis. Don't worry, I'm not really ashamed. <laughs> and that is some of the books that have been on my TBR for many, many years. So there are books in this pile of 10 that I have been meaning to read and owned for more than eight years. I think the sort of time scale in which I got these books is between 2012 and 2014, so between sort of eight and six years ago. Some of them will have been in some of the first book hauls on my channel and I've been meaning to read them ever since, but I haven't gone round it. And it's easy to forget about them when they're here in Edinburgh and I don't technically live in this house normally, so I just sort of put them to the back of my mind. They were books I was really excited about once upon a time and have still thought one day in the future I'd like to read because they sound kind of interesting, but yet I haven't. And I do still want to read most of these. There's a couple that I'm not 100% sure if I'm still interested in and I'd really like to have your opinions on and others that I still really want to read but there's just so much to read that they often don't get prioritised and then equally like I said out of sight out of mind but whilst I'm here I thought I would fess up to some of these books that I have owned for many many years now, get your opinions on them, ask about what ones you think I should prioritise, if there's others you think I should just you know get rid of at this point and also maybe talk a little bit about what made me want to read them in the first place. So without further ado let's have a look at the 10 books that have been on my TBR the longest. <laughs> So the first one on the top of my pile, these aren't in order of when I got them, but actually in saying that I feel like I might have owned this before I even started Booktube, so definitely eight years, and that is The Lost World by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. So you all know Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, he wrote the Sherlock Holmes books, which are some of my favourite books of all time. I have read and reread all of the Sherlock Holmes mysteries numerous times ever since I was around like 12, 13, that's when I really got in to Sherlock Holmes, yet somehow I have never read this book, which is probably Sir Arthur Conan Doyle's most famous work aside from Sherlock Holmes. It's a kind of historical sci-fi novel where a group of adventurers travel to this lost world where dinosaurs have seemingly survived. And I distinctly remember attempting to read this and being intrigued. I even found the bookmark I used when I was reading this book the first time and I apparently got to page 71 and given that there's only about 200 pages I almost got halfway. <laughs> Don't know why I didn't finish it but this is a boarding pass from a flight that I took in 2011. So yeah this book definitely predates booktube. Wow okay I was not expecting that, I hadn't opened this up but apparently I was on my way to uh, Paris from Edinburgh, no sorry from Paris to Edinburgh on the 18th of August 2011 which I do remember it was um, a, ho a holiday with my friend after our first year of university we went to Berlin and Paris on EasyJet apparently and I was reading this book but didn't finish it. That was a time in my life before I started booktube where I was really struggling to read because uh, at the end of high school, the beginning of university, recreational reading I had sort of fallen to the wayside and I was probably trying to get back into reading when I was reading this but then just didn't really manage. So I would still love to read this because I love Sherlock Holmes, I have no doubt therefore I will love this. But it just kind of got forgotten about and even though I got so far into it, it's been so long I've always known I'll need to start again and that always sort of deters me from picking books back up but I think actually maybe now that I'm filming this video I feel like this is something I should prioritise this year. Read it before it's been 10 years since you started it Jean if you're watching this video back. Read it before it's been 10 years, that's, that's my uh, resolution. <laughs> <laughs> we then have a book that I definitely bought when I was on booktube because it's by Shirley Jackson and this is The Sundial and this book's a bit of a cheat because it sort of represents more than one. Back when I first started booktube, the first like full year I was on booktube, 2013, I read two or three books by Shirley Jackson and fell in love with her. She just became an absolute favourite author, I discovered her because of booktube and I, I love her work, it's sort of like creepy um, horror, ghost stories, psychological stories um, from the mid 20th century and I just think her writing is perfection. Because I really enjoyed those few books as well I ended up buying pretty much everything I could find so there are three books on my bookcase by Shirley Jackson that I bought back 
in 2013, 2014, after I discovered Shirley Jackson with the intention of reading them, and then, like I said, did read some because I've read three books by her, but then never got around to the other three I bought. I don't feel terribly guilty because I know my mum's read some of them and a family friend borrowed some of them, so they've, they've been loved, but I still haven't read them, and one of those is The Sundial. This one in particular sounds really fascinating to me. I think it's got a bit of like a dark, humorous edge to it. It's about Mrs. Halloran, who has inherited the great Halloran house on the death of her son, much to the disgust of her daughter-in-law, the delight of her wicked granddaughter and the confusion of the rest of the household. But when the original owner, long dead, arrives to announce the world is ending and only the house and its occupants will be saved, they find themselves in a nightmare of strange marble statues, mysterious guests and the beautiful unsettling Halloran sundial which seems to be at the centre of it all. This sounds amazing! Why haven't I read this book? Like, I, I sort of dragged these off the bookshelves knowing that I hadn't um, read them even though I'd owned them for a long time and didn't reread the blurbs but now that I am I'm thinking that sounds brilliant I should read this this year maybe this video should just be my TBR for the rest of the year because <laughs> this sounds great and I know I love Shirley Jackson so I should really read all those books that I bought by her I definitely did that a lot when I first started booktube because I'd Gotten back into reading at the same kind of time I got into booktube, I was discovering authors I'd never read before and just felt compelled to like buy all of their works because I was so excited. And I certainly read quite a few books by those authors like Shirley Jackson but then never sort of made my way through everything they'd written. I think I'm less inclined to do that now. I don't necessarily pick up tons of books by an author at once before I read the other ones but that was just part of my enthusiasm of getting back into reading at that time so that's quite nice. We then have another book that I remember buying early on in booktube and that is a non-fiction book called Why Read the Classics by Italo Calvino. So I have read one other work by Italo Calvino, which is his Italian folk tales. Now I actually read that when I was a kid, like 11 or something. I, I loved it. My dad had it on holiday with us and he'd finished reading it, so I then read it. And it's just a collection of fables and folk tales, a bit like the Brothers Grimm. And it's just brilliant. Like I said, really, really loved it. So then when I was in university and I was getting back into reading, I saw this in the bookshop and thought, oh, that sounds fascinating because I was studying classics. This book isn't only about ancient literature. Um, but, you know, I was sort of rediscovering literature, I was reading more classics, studying ancient classics at university, and this is a collection of essays on classics from throughout the centuries and why they're still important today. I mean, this book came out in the 1900s, but, you know, sort of their relevance and their importance and why we still read them. It goes all the way back to, like, the Odyssey, we've got Xenophon, Ovid, all of whom are ancient writers, but then it does go up um, to more um, recent classics like Balzac, Tolstoy, Henry James, Robert Louis Stevenson, Ernest Hemingway, many of whom I've never actually read, and because I enjoyed the book I'd read by Italo Calvino, I thought this might be a really interesting musing on that subject, but as is obvious from this video, I never read it, so yeah, would love to hear if you have. We then have a book I'm shocked I haven't read for many reasons. One, because it's got a dragon on the front. I mean, <laughs> we know that's a selling point for me. And two, because I'm pretty sure this is one of the first books I ever got sent for review and I haven't read it, which is kind of bad. Um, it's called The Copper Promise by Jen Williams and the subtitle there says Let Sleeping Gods Lie. I assume there are dragons in this, it's a fantasy novel. And it says in the back, because honestly I couldn't tell you um, off the top of my head, there are some tall stories about the caverns beneath the citadel, about magic and mages and monsters and gods. Windrin of Crosshaven has heard them all, but she's spent long enough trawling caverns and taverns with her companion Sir Sebastian to know that there's no money to be made in chasing rumours. Then a crippled nobleman with a dead man's name offers them a job, exploring the citadel's darkest depths. It sounds just like another quest with golden adventure. If they're lucky, they might even have a tale of their own to tell once it's over. So this sort of sounds like a kind of heist uh, slash sort of adventure, thievery, story, fantasy world. Was that a sentence? Probably not. Um, but I don't really know anything about this book. I probably got, I was probably excited about it at the time. Like I said, it's got a dragon on the front, which kind of pulls me in, but I never got around to reading it and haven't really seen any reviews. So if you've read this book, please let me know what you think of it and should I give it a chance? Actually, in a similar vein to that book is another sort of fantasy book that I don't really know much about and that's Smiler's Fair by Rebecca Levine. This is book one of the Hollow Gods series and it's such a beautiful book. It's gorgeous like naked hardback which is one of my favourite book cover design sort of uh, elements. Uh, again, just going to read the back because I don't really know anything about it. Euron the moon god died, but now he's reborn in the false king's son. His human father wanted to kill him, but his mother sacrificed her life to save him. He'll return one day to claim his birthright. He'll change your life. He'll change 
everything. Smiler's Fair, the great moving carnival where any pleasure can be had, if you're willing to pay the price. They say all paths cross at Smiler's Fair, they say it'll change your life. And five people are about to discover how true that is. Oh, so we've got like a like magical, mysterious, dark carnival slash circus and gods reborn and fantasy kingdoms. That sounds like so many selling points. I honestly like can't remember what I thought about this book when it first came onto my TBR but I know it's been sitting on my bookshelf for years and many times when I've been clearing out my books I've thought should I get rid of it? I've still not read it and then I've probably looked at the back and thought no that actually sounds really good but then haven't read it. So once again if you've read this, if you have any reviews to share with me please 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 do because I really think in terms of those two books I need to hear what you guys think to know whether I'm going to enjoy them. Okay so this next one's kind of funny, we have Angela Carter's Magic Toy Shop. So I remember buying this second hand because I'd um, recently read The Bloody Chamber and Other Stories by Angela Carter and loved it and wanted to read more of her work without really thinking it through and this happened a few times when I was in my early days of booktube sort of um, mid to end of my undergrad degree when I was really getting back into reading, I was reading more classics, finally reading authors that um, people had been talking about for years like Angela Carter and then getting really excited and going and buying their other works without really thinking it through because my dad owned a lot of those authors and those books including this one. So actually this is a double, there's two copies of this book in my house right now. My dad's old copy is up on the top shelf there um, under C. And this happened a couple of times, I remember it happened with uh, Italo Calvino's Complete Cosmic Comics as well where I was like, look, I bought this book, it sounds really good and my dad just sort of went to his bookcase and went, Jean, I already own that, why didn't you check with me first? <laughs> but I was just so excited about books and finally like getting back into reading and buying my own books from Blackwells and there was always these three for two deals on classics so I kind of got caught up in all of that without thinking it through. But I am still interested in reading this. I haven't actually read an Angela Carter book in quite a few years but I really enjoyed what I read of her back, back in the day and she writes kind of like surrealist, maybe a little bit magic realism literary fiction. This one is about Melanie who walks in the midnight garden wearing her mother's wedding dress. Naked she climbs the apple tree in the black of the moon. Disaster ensues, transporting Melanie from rural comfort London to the magic toy shop. Honestly, that does not give much away but it definitely draws me in so I should read this especially since there's literally two copies in this house. Now we have one, if you've been watching my channel since the very beginning I feel like you will remember because this book was a mission of mine and I was determined to read it but obviously I haven't because it's in this video and that is The Decameron by Giovanni Boccaccio. This is a piece of medieval literature that I am still determined one day to read. One day I will be able to tell you, yes I read The Decameron, I have thoughts on that book but that's not yet. <laughs> This book is quite big, as you can tell. This edition is over 650 pages and it's teeny teeny tiny text. And I have a bookmark in it, much like uh, with The Lost World. This one that tells me that I got to around the 50 page mark, which given this book is 650 pages, isn't a ton. And when I picked this up to put in this video, I thought maybe this will be it. Maybe this will be the time I read it. And then I remembered what this book is about. This book is about a group of friends during uh, the 1300s when there was a plague in Florence and they all travel together to isolate with one another in this big grand house and tell each other their stories every evening. And yeah, so I can't decide whether now is the perfect time to read it or the worst time to read it, but I still would really, really like to. So if you've got any tips on reading the Decameron, um, how to break it up, then let me know. But because this is a group of friends telling each other stories, and a lot of those stories have then become quite well known in themselves, I think you can sort of read it in parts and just sort of appreciate each story. They're quite like rowdy and like out there. And I think that's also why I found it quite easy to put down because I was at the end of a story and it was before the next story. So I just never read it. And I kept putting this on TBRs for many, many years. And yes, it's still on my bookshelf and yes, I still haven't read it. We then have a book that was actually a gift and I think was maybe in my first ever book haul or my second ever book haul. But it's The Phantom Tollbooth by Norton Juster. This was a gift from a family friend, Annie, for my birthday. And it's a sort of classic middle grade book, uh, classic middle grade fantasy if the um, <laughs> cover doesn't give that away. And I have always meant to read this book. In fact, for a while I thought I had read it and then I realised I was getting it confused with the platform of the secret plat the secret of platform 13 
uh, which is a classic children's book I love and I thought they were the same book they're not the same book so that's why it took me a while to realize I hadn't read it <laughs> um, but I've also been really really appreciating my sort of middle grade of late over the past sort of year year and a half I've been reading more and more middle grade really enjoying it so now might be the time this has been sitting on my bookshelf waiting for the time and now might be that time and I also know that Annie bought this for me because she also loves this book so it comes highly recommended it's about Milo who receives a mysterious and intriguing package through the post and all of his previous feelings of boredom are banished having nothing better to do he points his pedal car towards the strange land beyond the toll booth and quicker than a flash he's entered the kingdom of wisdom where everything is unexpected that sounds brilliant it's got a map oh beautiful it also first came out in 1961 for anyone that's interested oh and there's even illustrations I should really like check this one out let me know if you read this if this is one of your like childhood favorites we then have a collection of short stories it was also a gift this one was from my dad and I think it might be another one did I own this before booktube or right at the beginning of booktube so in the early 2010s it is Margaret Atwood's Bluebeard's Egg so this is a collection of short stories by Margaret Atwood some of which are fairy tale retellings they may all be fairy tale retellings I think the title one gives away that it's about Captain Bluebeard let's have a look at the contents page okay so these titles don't really give much away on what they're about we've got the first story which is significant moments in the life of my mother <laughs> um, although there is one called uh, Ugly Puss which could be about Puss in Boots. That's really just me making a jump there. But I've never actually read any of Margaret Atwood's short stories. I've read quite a few of her novels and very, very much enjoyed them. Six novels by Margaret Atwood, I think. And she was one of the authors that really helped me get back into reading when I was around 19. So that might be why my dad bought me this. I really enjoyed Margaret Atwood when I was a teenager as well. I read three of her books when I was a teenager and then when I was getting back into reading I read The Handmaid's Tale and it sort of re-inspired my love of Margaret Atwood so I very much assume that's why my dad picked this up for me. I think it's a second hand copy and he was the best at finding good books in second hand <laughs> shops. So it would be nice to re read this. I, like I said I've never read any short stories by Margaret Atwood so I'm not sure how her short stories compared to her novels but it would be interesting um, even just from a comparative perspective to pick them up. So let me know if you've read this because it's not a Margaret Atwood book I've heard many people talk about. Then last but not least I have another short story collection. This one I bought myself on the recommendation of a bookseller in Waterstones. The bookseller literally put this in my hand and thought you should read this and I'm, I'm easily swayed so I bought it. It's The Wine Dark Sea by Robert Aikman which are I believe kind of strange surreal horror short stories. The title actually comes from an ancient Homeric quote which is quite fun but I don't know if the stories themselves have any links to antiquity or that was just like a clever title or maybe one story does um, but it was first published in 1998 and I don't really know much about it other than Robert Aikman is quite like a famous surrealist horror story writer so it would be fun from my perspective to have tried his work. I hadn't heard of him before the bookseller recommended me this book but then I looked him up after and realised he was quite well known and quite well respected within that genre. However, it's been such a long time since I picked this book up that I kind of forgot I even owned it. So I would love to know if you've read any of Robert Aikman, this book or any other ones and whether you think I would enjoy it. How do you feel about these stories? Let me know. That however brings me to the end of the 10 books I have had on my TBR for the longest. All of which still actually really appeal to me and sound very exciting. I would really like to know your thoughts on them if you've read them because often I am drawn to the more new and shiny books on my TBR over the ones that have been there for a while and these ones as we've established have certainly been there a while. So do let me know down in the comments down below what you think of these books and also what books have sneakily been hiding on your bookcases or Kindle for the longest that you've been meaning to read but just haven't got round to and if you're willing to confess how long has it been there. Until next time though, happy reading and I'll see you all again soon. Bye guys!